So what is MIROS? It's a minimally invasive reduction and osteosynthesis system. It's a new system which is not fixed to any area. So since uh, many of them are, may not be aware, I will show you some cases. This is one of the most very difficult cases in a 13-year-old boy. To fixing a cave is difficult. Your cave when you enter there, it is very difficult to cross it. And mostly we go for plating. So this is how it was managed by Meros. You can see the healing and the final healing there. This is a distal uh, radial fracture, distal radial fracture, reduced, and you can see the Meros. This is Mario slides. Uh, I've taken his permission to get the slides. You can see he's trying it, putting the wires into it. You can see it's entering and entered into the full length and that is the final locking of the system and that is the end result. Now, coming to mirrors, it has a special wires and special clamps and dedicated simple instruments. So the primary components are the special looking wires, it is not sharp, just a small bevel on the top. You cannot use power drill with this, this is purely manual. And these are the special clamps, the secondary uh, instruments. This is made of aluminum and titanium. And you have 1.5 system, 2, 2.5 and 3 mm wires and clamps. So each system has its own clamps. In India, the system is called Tangari Prakash Trauma System. So this is the box which you get it, that is the wires. So the wires and clamps you select depending on the size of the bones. The indications I mentioned there, pediatric fractures, metaphyseal, epivacial fractures, open fracture, diaphyseal fractures, and osteoporotic bones. So these are the speciality of the clamps. You can see it's all color coded. Different types of clamps. And you can see it's a plane. You can see two uh, plates. Each plate takes only uh, parallel wires. You can have two plates or single plate clamps. You can twist the plate there. So the wires are held by side snapping. And the plates can take in different angles, but one plate take only parallel wires. And the pullout strength of the clamp is 1,600% of Jess and 1,400% of Umax, 600% of Illusoro. That is the that is what they boast of. But you know the limitations of the clamp. One clamp will take only same size of wires. You cannot mix up two wires. One, take, one plate takes only two parallel wires. You cannot mix sizes. These are the tertiary implants which you can bar bender, introducers, spanners, cutters and all. This is, it is looking like on a model. So it basically works on a principle of arch and keystones. You know the strength of the arch is coming out of two weaknesses. So this keystone is the important part of this arch. If without that keystone, nothing will work. So again, the Eiffel Tower, just imagine the Eiffel Tower without the base connection. If you don't have the base connection there, the Eiffel Tower will not be stable. So similarly, we have been using caves in trauma, which has its own complication like loosening, infection, pain, weeping bias, edema, and CRPS. These are all because of the loosening. The wire, each wire itself is a loose wire. It is never stable there. It's not like Illusoro, which is fixed. The loose wires are all prone for infection. In Illusoro, all the wires are fixed, so it won't move. So you need to have a specific wire entry points so that the wire and soft tissues are friendly. The move, moving soft tissue should not be prevented by the wire, and the moving skin should not be blocked by the wires. Getting entry into a middle ear canal in a normal case, it's very difficult. Because, and progressing further is also difficult in a metaphyseal fractures. The usual care where when you start entry there, it, it goes to opposite cortex. When you try there, it goes to opposite cortex with the power drills. It hits there and goes there. If you want to enter into the medullary canal, many a time you have to go very close to the joint or maybe into the joint to get entry there. 
the ideally an extra articular metaphyseal entry with an easy travel along the middle canal would have been the best but that is not impossible that is what is given by mirrors you can go enter the metra uh, the metaphyseal area and travel along the middle canal occupying the whole middle canal increases the stability if it is narrow let the first wire occupy full and the second wire can just wait there wherever it is coming uh, beyond the fracture site so this take extra care in bending the wires to the clamps so bend it like this and see that there is no skin and pin interference there and if it is incorrect bending can produce skin bending can be very painful a limit movements of the joint produce infection and can even result in crps bending the wire we have special instruments if you do it properly they can do some so small works also there and that is how it was bent no add on additional wires can be added so generally bend the tip of the wire so that it can advance and it controls the rotational movement also this is how you you bend the tip of the wire so that like your uh, guide wire you can bend it and enter there so you can see one demo there just enter there and reach us here and then bend it there get the opposite cortex I mean middle leg canal and moves along the middle leg canal and go to the tip of the I mean the end of the humerus the other wire just enter this and once it reaches the opposite just move it rotate it and enter this so guide wire itself the wire itself will reduce it so it's a manual work so now you can see the end result and you can add one additional wire there and stabilize it this is a completely closed procedure that is the movements the 17 year old boy this is how it was fixed getting a wire like this is difficult what i do especially on medial side the ulnar nerve is very close i don't want to slip there put a just a small 1.25 mm wire make a drill bit calibrated drill bit you have a bigger hole and through that hole you pass the wire that goes inside and that is the movement you doing on the second day and was discharged on the second day and that is how it was healing that is the final result this is another shoulder case you can see it is a joystick and reduction there that's how it is looking from outside yeah this is a fracture both bones forearm displaced normally you go for 13 year old boy you have to go for a fixations so this is the neuros completely closed procedure and that is how it has healed so the problems are inadequate, inadequate reduction wrong entry points incorrect bending of the wires single wire in a clamp too close wires and clamps too far away from the skin will produce instability a good alternative many many open procedures and similar outcome and scarless thank you